Hello ADF fans, this video is going to focus on some of the recent updates we've made to the lookup transformation in ADF data flows. I'll include some tips and tricks on using it within your data flows and how to make it work well for you. Okay, so we have some existing videos already on the lookup that talk a little bit about the basics of the lookup that are still there. Uh, but in those videos, we talk a lot about how to use aggregates and other sort of transformations after the lookup to uh, then govern that data once you have the additional data through the lookup. A lot of that has been built into the lookup transformation now, so I'm going to talk about that. But let's get started. So on my screen, uh, you see I've already primed my data flow canvas with a primary source and a reference data source. Now this is a very common use case and the primary use case for the lookup transformation. In this case, I have incoming data at the top. This is my movies CSV text limited data. And I have prune columns afterwards, which I've called my select transformation. And the reason I'm doing this is because I, for this demo, I only have, I, I want to have these four primary columns coming in. And then I want to augment them with two additional columns, the rating and the rotten tomato. Now to do that, I'm going to do a lookup against my reference data. So my reference data here is also movie CSV that has the rating and rotten tomato. Movie is going to be the primary key for the lookup. So the lookup allows you to set a condition that is your uh, matching condition. And for me, it's going to be rather easy. In this case, it's just going to be movie, but it can be complex compound keys as well in Dataflow. All right, so that being said, let's go back up to my prune calls up here. And you'll see that movie as a primary key is an integer. And then also the rating and rotten tomato are actually integers. Because this is a text limited CSV file, there is no data type stored with it. So the data set is all just strings. Within Dataflow, I have a number of ways that I can cast this data. I can ask Data Factory through the data type to infer those data types for me. I could also change them manually here in the source. So right now I'm set in the source transformation. But one of the tips I'd like to provide for you that I like to see users do within Dataflow is to leave the source transmission a little bit pure. Here I am in the projection, and this is a CSV, so I can change these data types. But if I want to change the projection, or if I want to uh, select a different data set, the way to make this much more flexible and generalized is to leave that as it is, and instead do your casting and your column selecting outside and other transformations. So let's first do the column selecting. So I'm going to add another transformation to my reference data and I'm going to use the select transformation. This is my column pruning. So I'm going to do the same thing I did above where I prune the columns, but here I'm just going to call this, I'm going to say prune. Uh, let's do this. Let's call it keep rating and rotten tomato. Those are the only two things that I want to keep. In addition to that, of course, I also need the primary key of the movies uh, column. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to use the manual mapping at the bottom and I'm going to take out the things I don't want, which is already included in the incoming data above. So I'm going to delete those three uh, columns. Now I have my uh, lookup uh, now is much more pure just for the purpose of this lookup. So this is another tip that I, I like to give. I believe that this governing of your lookup stream of data, your lookup source, pr uh, provides a much better performing uh, data flow overall. Okay, so this is going to give us the ability to just bring in the columns that we want to add to the top, as well as the, the matching uh, columns, of course, as well. Now, these are all coming in as strings still. So now we're going to do our typecasting, but not in the source. So we're going to do that through a derived column. So I'll call this derived column as casting. And because those all are strings today, and I need to make them all into integers, I'm just going to do a rule and make it a lot easier for me because I'm, I kind of tend to be a little bit lazy. So I'm going to add a column pattern. I'll delete that first one, which is in uh, a early binding uh, draft column. So I'm going to do late binding. So what I'm going to do is because all three of those columns need to have this rule applied to it, I'm just going to use the trick of saying, you will say anything at all, apply this rule to it. The first thing you need to do is to, when you're creating column patterns in drive column, the first thing you need to do then is to set what the new column name is going to be. I'm going to use this, which is dollar dollar, which means that all the column names stay the same. All I want to do is just cast them. So my casting for each of these is going to be two integer. And I'm just going to keep the value as it is. That's all. So just casting, that's it. That's all I do. Now I can go back up to the top and do my lookup. Now, instead of going up against the raw ungoverned set of data, I'm now going to, be, going to use this casting transformation down here as my right hand lookup. And now the data has been cleansed, it has been taken out the um, extraneous columns and also is casted to the correct data types. So we can do lookup here. 
Okay, now my left side is the top row. My right hand side, my lookup stream, is going to be casting. You can still select the others, but let's not uh, go up against the raw data. Let's use the govern data. Now in lookup, now you have the ability to say that I want to bring back multiple matches if they exist, or which is more common when you're using lookup for this kind of reference lookup. You only want one row because you only want to add a set of values to each unique value on your left hand side. And so I'm going to say no uh, multiple rows, match on any row. What this is saying when it says match on, because I only want one column or one, one set of values, we're telling Data Factory what to do if there are multiple matches on that right hand lookup side. Either pick the first match, the last match, or any of them. Just pick it at random, it doesn't matter. So for us, it doesn't matter, okay? Because I just want to get the rating and the Rotten Tomato, regardless of if there is duplicate and bad data in my left hand side. My matching criteria is simply movie. And notice on the right hand side on the lookup, it is now the right data type because I use that derived column. Uh, now, let me uh, show you another tip. So um, within lookups now, we can have either equality or uh, non-equals to provide the equivalent of non-equijoins. So when you set these other sort of equalities, if you were to say non-equals or less than greater than and so on, uh, you will be prompted by Data Factory to set this optimization, go into optimize, and to set broadcast to fixed. So broadcasting is an important concept within Spark and within Dataflow since Dataflow uses Spark. And that is that it tells the Spark engine that you explicitly want to try to push down the values for your joins or your lookups in this case down into the nodes of the cluster. So the default setting for this for every lookup and join and exist transformation within Data Factory is auto. So we're just essentially saying Data Factory and um, Spark, you have the, um, the smart to know when you can and when you should push down those values into the nodes so that all of the lookups and the joins can use the data locality for best performance. But in this case, we need to ensure that that happens. So we're going to ask you and enforce that you set this to fixed. When you set it to fixed for non join, you then need to pick uh, either left, right, or both sides. Okay, in most cases, you're going to say at a minimum the right side. Be and that's because the right side is usually less values and less columns, like in this case, because we are just going to go and pick a couple of um, you know reference data points to add to our left-hand side. Essentially, think of this as the lookup is a point reference lookup. So we're going to say right. If you know your left-hand side is small enough to fit, or can fit within the memory space that you've applied to the size of your Azure integration runtime for your data on both sides, then you can uh, um, optimize by broadcasting both, which should pro provide a better performing data flow. Just understand that the downside to this is you must have a memory optimized um, Azure integration runtime so that the cluster can have the memory space to be able to do the push down uh, into the nodes on both sides if you do that. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to actually leave it set as fixed here, even though I'm going to go back to my lookup settings and make this an equal um, equality join. That will still work just fine. You can always optimize on a um, equi join as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's see what we got so far. So this is going to be uh, matching movies on both sides of the incoming data and the lookup. And it's going to give me only one row. Let's double check this again. Only one row, so any row. I'm not picking which one. And it's going to add... You know, actually, let's go over here. Let's go to the, um, we can do this. On the casting drive column, we can look at inspect and we can see which columns we're going to get. So we're going to get rating run tomato added to our uh, outgoing data at the top here. So we see that right there. So rating and run tomato have been added. Now I have duplicates in my left hand side, but because I said any row, I did not get a cross join. I did not, did not get a Cartesian product out of this. I only get one value for each. That's very good. So one last thing I'm going to show you is back on that lookup. If I were to have a set match multiple rows, now I'm not going to have this selector for which one do I want to pick because there is no picking involved. This is just saying blast everything out there. This again, when you set uh, multiple rows, very important for you to have your um, fixed optimized set on because that's going to essentially be a equivalent of a Cartesian product. So what's going to happen now is this one, two, three, four rows will explode out to many more because you're going to have, um, since it's essentially the same data on both sides, you're going to have multiple matches uh, in a Cartesian product. And so there you see many more matches on that same. 
And I actually think I lied. There is one more thing I want to show you before you go, and that is that I use this reference data as a lookup specific for this purpose on this lookup up here. You can use the same source multiple times with different sort of data governance streams to the right hand side this way. Just take the plus sign next to that raw incoming data and add a new branch to it. So now you can do your select for different columns in your different typecasting afterwards. This is another good practice. So in this case, maybe I just wanted to, uh, maybe I have some stream data on the left-hand side that's coming in that has the same data set, but doesn't have the year. So I just want the year to be added to it. So you can do the same thing here. I can say keep year, and then I can take out everything else except the year. Again, keeping the key column that I need to do the matching. And again, I can do my casting over here. So this new branch to be able to have multiple lookup sources off of one source, very common and a very good practice because then you're only looking up against a certain set of values. You don't need to do this pruning after you do your lookup, do it before. Okay, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching.